I am Miguel Angel Coelho. I am a Honduran physician. I work here in Santa Lucia in Tibuca at the shoulder to shoulder clinic. I am the medical director of the clinic. I've been here for 12 years, almost 12 years now. And I am working uh, with another doctor, another physician, and we have a, a team of um, people here. This area is the southern part of uh, Intibuca. Intibuca is one of the 18 states or departamentos de Honduras. And Intibuca, along with uh, Lempira, the, the other state, which is to the left, I mean to the west of, of Intibuca, are um, the two poorest of the uh, departamentos de Honduras. And uh, Intibuca is mostly Indian population, in, but that is close to La Esperanza, the center and north part of the state. And there are Lencas. So the Lencas is the main like, uh, ethnic group in this area. But here in the southern part of, of, the, of the state, we have a mixture, a lot of mixture between the, the Criollo and the, some Indian heritage. And uh, that makes a very interesting mix of, of culture. Um, people are mostly uh, Catholics, even that uh, many of them are not really religious. But they, they say they are Catholics, but, but a lot of them don't really attend to church very often. But many do. The family is the, the key part of the, of the culture. So here, in a house, you're going to find sometimes up to three generations. You find the grandparents, the parents, the uh, children, and sometimes even the, the children of the, of the, you know, like, whole in one, one, in one house. And the elderly people, they have a lot of respect. You know, they have, like, the highest uh, position in the home, in the, in the house. They, they are well respected. And whatever they say is 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 well uh, uh, accepted. So, in our part in the healthcare, we have noticed that uh, people have a lot of beliefs that they are uh, passed from generation to generation. For example, they have the belief on what they call evil eye or mal de ojo. In this uh, belief. Uh, someone with a very strong sight just for looking at a child can make the child ill. You know, usually it's, it's like the people have a very strong uh, stare and, and when they um, look at the, at the child, if they don't touch the child and if they don't like talk to the child, they can make the child ill. So to avoid that, the person uh, is asked to to hold the baby and to rock the baby and, and has to, to get some saliva and make the sign of the cross or sometimes, you know, put that around the face of the baby. The other one that they have is about the um, empacho. So empacho is like a medical condition, according to the people in which the patient can be a child or an adult, uh, it has a lack of appetite, is losing weight, and it has some like uh, little uh, what they call masses, very small ones like the side of a uh, uh, bean. And uh, they try to massage the people to get rid of that, of the things. But when they are doing that, when they are taking care of the evil eye or the empacho, they are also uh, giving home remedies uh, that they also made with, with some herbs. But they are uh, can you praying. Like, can you tell me about the home remedies a little bit more? Well, sometimes they use uh, like um, a ruda, you know, which is a plant here. I don't know the name is in English. They use uh, what, what is that? How, how does that help? They get. Um, they have to, to like to blend the, the to, 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 put, to bring the, the, the plant to, to boil you know in water then they kind of grind the, the herb and they make a massage with that usually they mix it with alcohol they are supposed to to that plant to take care of whatever evil um, 
presence is in the in the person, but also is absorbed to the body and, and takes out of the body whatever um, mean or poisonous system the person has. Um, so it's very important for the people to 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 feel that whatever the doctor is doing is doing in, in the right moment and in the in the right way according to their beliefs. For example, are women that they don't come to the doctor if they have their menstrual period because they think that the, that they can get sick just for stepping out of the house when they have that. So we have to be very sensitive to that and also try to to, to explain to the people. Um, also, they think that they can get air inside the body through the ears or mostly through the ears, that that air that gets in the body causes pain. So people, uh, especially women, after they deliver a baby, they have like cotton balls, and they put it in the ears to avoid the air getting in their bodies and causing some, some, some damage. So all those beliefs, we, we are aware of them, of them, and the ones that are not um, threatening or the ones that doesn't cause uh, damage, uh, I don't try to, to fight them. But the ones that are, that are a potential uh, danger to the health of the patient, then I explain to them that they shouldn't do those things. Um, in general, people are here are very friendly. They're very poor, but they're friendly. They're open their, their house to whoever is visiting. They want to know what you do. They want to, 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 to know your family and things that you do. And especially with foreign people, like with uh, gringos, when they see the Americans or, or European, whatever, who is coming from another country, they, they are very, very excited. They are around the people, especially the children. They sometimes just stare at the person, but it's not like a, 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 a way to, to do something bad. It's just there is something new to the person. Um, people now, in the last uh, eight years, are starting to, to, to get more education. We usually hear the literacy is very, illiteracy is very high. In some of the towns, it's up to 60% of the people in the village that can't read. Here in the main city of the uh, county of Santa Lucia, is is lower. Here, I think it's probably only like 10%. 10 to 20 percent of the people that can't read. Children are going more to school, and there are more uh, opportunities to go to high school, either in La Esperanza or, or other places. Um, so now with education, people are also more uh, uh, easy to, to, to get teach in, in health. They're more open to new ideas, and they're more open to know that some diseases can be transmitted by water, for example. Diarrhea, a very simple and easy way to avoid many deaths is just boiling the water. But we need to make the people understand that in the water are very small, tiny, microscopic uh, entities that are the bacteria, and that the bacteria gets in the body and it makes you ill, instead of being like an evil uh, presence that make you get sick. Do they think that uh, that there's an evil presence? That uh, What do you mean by that? Okay, sometimes they think that there are some uh, conditions uh, that can be caused by something evil, like an evil spirit mm -hmm. or an evil spell that was uh, placed upon somebody. And uh, that the way to get rid of that is going to a curandero or a witch doctor to have that person do uh, a, 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 another spell okay. mm -hmm. to get rid of the of the disease. And, and sometimes the people will go to do those things first and then come to the doctor when that doesn't help. So usually when, when I have a very sick, especially a very sick child, usually less than five years old, I asked, the, I asked the parents, have you been to the curandero? Or have you been to the sobador? Is the other way they call them. And 
probably like 70% of the times they, they have. They have been taking the baby to another person to do some other things. And um, so we need to be also aware of that. Did you ask Roberto's uh, mother if she had been? Yes. The very skinny child? Yes. And he had been? Yes, he had been. Wow. He had been to Did she say places. anything about that? Well, they said that they they were treating him for empatio, you know. Empatio is what I said wow. before, with the, that they make like right. a massage to right. try to get right. rid of right. little like lumps in, under the skin, mm -hmm. and that can can take you know the disease away. Do you know where these these doctors are? Do you, uh, do you know? I know one. She lives right across from the clinic. And with her, it's a very interesting relation because when I came here, I I went to visit her, and I I show an interest, in, and I was really interested in, in seeing what uh, herbs she was using and for what uh, conditions. So I I gained her 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 trust, trust. and I I was able to, to tell her, okay, mm -hmm. if if you have a, a, a child or an adult that is not improving and you think that maybe something different. You can send it to me, and I and I have received several, several cases that she said no, this is something uh, more difficult, so I go to the doctor. So that's nice. But that comes from very old culture. That comes from very the old Indian, culture. The Indian, from the thousands Indian, of years back. Yes, yes. The, you know, from the uh, time of the Spaniards and, and even before, you know, that the people here were using herbs to to treat the 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 conditions. But then when the uh, Catholic uh, culture came, it was a, a, a join, uh, you know, the, the, the Catholic or the Christian, probably I must say the Christian culture came, so it was adopted by also these, this other culture that was before. So now they are together. We, we, are, we, we work together with the Ministry of Health, the local government uh, health presence here and and with them we 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 try to to give resources and we, and we try to, to teach the people of what you're saying um, and every day when a, a woman comes to the office to see me if I, I ask them how many kids they have and if they want to to do something about spacing you know the the number of kids and we talk about the different methods from the natural method you know try to to which is the rhythm to know when they have the period and when there is the fertile time mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and, and to avoid to have uh, intercourse in the in the time that they, when they can get pregnant to the uh, other methods you know either condom or iud or injections and so we try to to, to teach Every every day, and it's one of the areas where the Minister of Health is trying to to make a, a bigger impact. Because you're right, I mean there is a lot of poverty, and people have like 12, 11 kids in a um, very small house when there are not enough food for for that many people. And uh, most of the uh, of the people here, they plant their their crop usually is only corn and, and beans during the rainy season uh, which is uh, the rainy season starts in may but in june is is, is the, the the strong i mean the real uh, good rains so most people start planting in, in in end of may or beginning of june corn and they have one crop and after that one, they plant beans and sometimes another crop of corn. And the rain stops in, in October. By October, still we have some rain. And then the dry season, like right now, they are eating the corn or the beans that they planted in the previous previous season. So it has to last them. It has to last them at least and what if six it, months. What if it runs out? If wrong hands, they are in trouble. Usually, they uh, have to sell if they have uh, chickens or if they have pigs to get money to buy more corn. Because here, corn means life. Because people eat tortilla. They make tortilla out of the corn, and then they add uh, beans or whatever. And by the way, eating uh, corn and beans is a well 
It's very a, well sourced of a balanced, it's mm -hmm. a balanced mm -hmm. diet. Mm -hmm. They have to add some meat to get proteins, but people doesn't have uh, much money. So uh, there are families that they eat meat once a month. But there are other also resources of, of protein. You know, we are trying to introduce better quality uh, corn seed or even use other other alternatives like uh, soy, like soybean. But in this area, it's not well uh, known, and so also it's more expensive. But there are other things that we can do. Do you think that um, that um, uh, giving uh, setting up uh, filtration systems for these people that are drawing their water from bad water sources would be a smart idea? Yeah, absolutely. That will will decrease the amount of diarrhea, the mortality, the infant mortality. In, in a lot. Just, the, just the, the diarrhea is the main killer. Yes, that's true. And it comes from the bacteria in the water. It's true. So, just uh, I think it's one of the, the single um, uh, basic uh, prevention. And it's uh, inexpensive things. to do because I think it's like eighty eighty five dollars. Eighty five dollars per filter. Per filter. Per filter. And it lasts for a very long time. Yes, yes. So that's another project that we have. You know, the water filtration. Thing, to try to introduce that in every every house because the problem we have is the, the people doesn't want to boil the water because it's expensive to put to uh, fire. Fire, fire you know the firewood that they use to to boil the water they can be using that to uh, make food so they they don't want to waste you know the the mm -hmm. firewood in, in uh, yes it is a problem. It is a problem because we are losing or 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 young people, you know, the the more productive people mm, to go to to very far away, as you said, and that causes many social problems. Uh, sometimes when they are in the states, they meet other people and they just stay there and they abandon their family, or even when they are in the states, they learn other uh, things, you know, like to drink or to use drugs and stuff like that, and then whatever money they're making there is, is waste. But also here, the children are growing without the, the father figure. So it's easier for them to get into other problems. And as you said, sometimes they don't have a family when they're here. The women sometimes, they, they meet other person, you know, and they, they decide to go. Uh, it's true, when they send money from, from the States, that is helping a lot. It helps to to get a better better house. Also, people uh, communities get together. Uh, people that are in the states, they get together and they choose to to pay to bring electricity to their community. So, uh, what things we can do to avoid people migrating to to other countries? In this case, the United States is to to try to get uh, to develop a uh, economy, improve the economy, the local economy here, with more uh, source of work, that people can work and have a, a good income, um, to, to, to look incentives for the people to stay and say, okay, yes, I, I can go to the state and make um, this amount of money, but if I stay and I start working in this, I can also improve my situation in the future, and I don't have to, to take the risk of dying because it's a very difficult uh, journey. So we're working also with other institutions, not at this moment, shoulder to shoulder, but there are other institutions that they are uh, trying to get uh, a small enterprises in the, in the community. We have been teaching shoulder to shoulder, ombro ombro, we have been uh, helping with another problem, which is the the girls project um, uh, that is called Yo Puedo, that means I can. So we're trying to, to improve the self-esteem of the girls so they can um, uh, do also small businesses uh, and sell their products and make an income. And that way they, they also feel that they're able to, to bring money to the household. There is not only the, the, the man. So in the future, if it happens that they are the, the head of the household because her husband is in the state and didn't return, they're going to learn some skills or they're going to know some skills that make them uh, do 
uh, products that they can sell in that way, bring money into the into the house. That's great. What is uh, what is this clinic like when without the brigade here? Uh, you have two doctors and. Do you stay pretty busy, and, and uh, how do you have time to uh, do all, take care of this place, and think about all of these important social and and uh, health stuff? Okay. All of the how do you how do you have time to to, to look at to all of these this. other things that we've been talking about? Okay, yeah. during a brigade, it's different. It's different in the way that there are not many people from outside uh, working in the clinic, but. Uh, we still have the sometimes the same amount of patients coming, and yes, we are two doctors, and I think the the best answer in how we can do all this is because we have a good team. We have a good team of people working here. We have um, a health committee uh, or the board of Ombro Ombro that they uh, meet regularly and they uh, set the policies and the and the rules in how the clinic works. And then the people, the employees, the staff of the clinic, we, we make a good team. And we, uh, when we are seeing patients, there are all the people taking care of the different uh, programs that we have. So that's, that's the way we are able to, to improve the, the condition the, of the... The board is working on a lot of this, this problem. Yes, yes. And the mayor and... And the, the mayor and everybody. Uh -huh. So yeah. it's, a, it's a whole local effort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I won't hold you too much longer. I just want to ask one more question. Uh, what, what would you say to potential people that trying to get people involved and in coming down here? I mean, um, I guess um, to try to encourage people to to contribute to shoulder to shoulder or to get involved. What would, what would you say to them? Well, I would say that um, this is the 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 great opportunity in helping to change a lot of people with uh, very little. And also, when you come here, if, if you choose to, to come and help as a volunteer, you end up gaining more. Because just uh, conditions that the people are, are, are living here, uh, many things that we take for granted, you know, just to, to go to the house of a person that has a, a child that is not able to walk, and to offer them an opportunity to, to make that child move around that makes the people uh, be so happy for something that they, they, they couldn't do themselves. Or if a child is malnourished and you provide the food and that child uh, improves, you know, uh, instead of being lying down in a bed without doing anything, then he's able to be active again. That brings the the world to, to everybody so so I will say um, the best way to 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 help is is to do whatever you can it can be a little bit of money or it can be uh, donating your time or your expertise or your your skills in coming down here to help to to build something to improve a, a, a nutritional program or to teach the people, or to uh, teach them uh, an economy and skills, or or how to improve the the, the house, or a new way to to plant uh, crops, or things like that. This organization definitely feels like a very close group of not only uh, you know coworkers but friends, and uh, yes. there's a really just a warm family feel. Exactly. To Exactly. It's not like someone comes here and say, I, I am the boss and I am a, a, a gringo from the States and you have to do this because this is, this is the way that we should do it. No. It's like coming and say, well, I am your friend and I want to work with you with what I can, but also you have to do something and, and I can learn from you. So we are going to work shoulder to shoulder to do these things. And that's why is the name of the organization. It's not uh, I am above of you and I am a smarter. No, it's, we can work together and, and improve things together, and we can learn from each other. And that's great. And, and I noticed that um, Jeff was saying when he first came here, there wasn't that many lights out there at nighttime. He was any. But, he was any. And yeah. what does that say about the with the clinic? Let's let's walk out here just real quick, and then we're done. I mean, that must say something about. I heard somebody said that people move here because 
Yes. The, the, because the health care. It's true. I mean, it's true. When, when, when we first came, I don't know if you can see the lines, but the four little lines were the only lines. You know, it was like four lines around there. And, and, and now people are starting to, to build around the clinic, close to the clinic, because of this great opportunity for them to, to, to have help. So definitely, uh, the presence of Shelly to Shoulder has changed this community and the surrounding villages. And um, we are proud of it because it's something good that is lasting. You know, I've been here almost for 12 years now. And, and, and every, every, every year, every brigade, every uh, people that comes, I, I, I learn and also inspire me to stay longer. But the best um, or the main reason that made me stay is, is, the, is the poor people. When you go to their homes, somebody in the mountains, and, and, and you see that they, you are changing their lives, that you're making uh, an impact in them, is, is what makes you stay. And they, they show you appreciation for that. Yes, yes, they do. You said whatever already, little things sometimes they, if they don't have money, they can bring yeah, chicken. Yeah, I mean, you don't ask. Yeah, we go to see them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't have money to pay, and they return one month later and say, Doctor, here are two eggs for you, because one month ago you took care of me and didn't have money. So those are nice things. Well, thank you very much for your interview. Well, thank you for and, having and, me. And I really enjoyed uh, meeting you. <laughs> me too.